we have the I don't know who's in the Selenium team or not, but we've got a whole bunch of <laughs> Selenium people up here. Yeah, this, is all this is all Selenium, like the core team and then relate it. Oh, okay, there we go. Have a hand for them, yeah. We are missing one or two, but we are all. There's okay. Also, uh, <laughs> On the shoulders of giants, yeah. Right. yeah. So these are the little people. <laughs> okay, so um, we have a panel. If anyone has any questions, um, ask them, and we'll get some responses. And we'll just go on like that. What? We don't have a microphone, so yell. Yeah. And try, try and keep the, the huh? quiet, Simon. I have the mic. Yeah, uh, tr keep this, the, the questions focused on Selenium and where it's going and, and where they're taking it, things like that, as opposed to technical problems about Selenium or bugs and stuff like that. So there's a question back there. Yeah, I want to ask about reporting, report results, FOMA, um, XML, or some other, some other format that's slightly more uh, parsable and richer, and maybe cruise control integration, because not, not in the base, but you know, as, a, as a site project, Uh, the, the, I'll, 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 for, for the benefit of uh, for the, the YouTube viewers of the world, um, the question is, what do we do? What's our story about reporting? Um, I think that my flippant answer, unfortunately, is we have so many problems to deal with. We com completely punted on reporting. Um, however, um, one of the one of the giants I uh, was standing on, um, so to speak, <laughs> Ward Cunningham created this thing called FIT. Uh, framework for integration, integrated tests. And, th and that's what the Lenium table tests kind of thing was supposed to be an implementation of. It was supposed to be fit for the JavaScript framework. And, th and the goal of fit was that uh, it was supposed to be your tests, when they run, they go green and red, and then boom, that's your report. Boom. Uh, however, uh, not everyone writes their tests in HTML, uh, and so all this Java and Ruby stuff. So, so the quick answer is, you know, that, I don't know how to, how to spin this, but a, a, a wonderful opportunity for commercial investment, perhaps <laughs> I could say. Um, I don't think the Selenium project will ever catch up in what it's already promised to do to also do kick-ass reporting. And one of the other things, if we can stay isolated, I know I've talked too long, but um, if we have good handoff on what we've produced, someone else could have a completely isolated reporting engine that can just consume, um, yeah. So, but I, I don't think we'll ever really take that on. Yeah, something to add in this area, for those doing, uh, lucky enough to do Ruby and our spec stuff, uh, something to look for is called Spec UI. It gives you out of the box reporting with screenshots when you test off anything. That's pretty nice and awesome. Check it out. And, and I'll say, Spec does give you a nice report when you <laughs> run out. <laughs> More questions? Yeah. So um, the, the thing with the Selenium interface in Selenium RC is that it is an interface. You can have multiple imp implementations. Uh, and currently, all those implementations sit on top of real browsers. Um, the thing that WebDriver does is that it's got an implementation of, of its interfaces and, and of the Selenium interface that sits on top of HTML unit. Now, you know, there's, there's an argument where people go, you can't use HTML unit because uh, all web apps nowadays are written in Rails, and there's huge amounts of JavaScript. And, and sure, if you've got a website where you've laced it with jQuery goodness, um, and there's no getting away from a sort of ubiquitous JavaScript environment, then you know HTML unit isn't a good fit for you. No pun intended, Jason. Um, <laughs> I'll just wait. <laughs> but if you're doing um, a test, like uh, I've done um, banking websites and um, sites which are sort of international newspapers on the web, um, stuff like that, 
where they want, they've got a fairly basic interface. And you could test a large amounts of that using straight HTML unit. Then yeah, there is absolutely no reason why you can't at some point in the future sort of uh, go, I want HTML unit to run these tests and just pass in a different uh, implementation of the Selenium interface. Does that answer your question? I, I would add to that, uh, you know, people occasionally ask me, should I use HTML unit or can you web test or should I use Selenium? Should I use a fake browser or a real browser? And I usually like to tell people you should do a little bit of both. Uh, you, know, you know, that way you can get some testing headlessly without interrupting your slash dot browsing. But you can also get some real testing on a real browser. I would also add that HTML unit is a fantastic project and despite the fact that they're a totally fake browser, they can run a lot of powerful JavaScript, including, disturbingly, they can run Selenium. It's written entirely in JavaScript. So you can run Selenium inside their fake browser as if it were a real browser. I don't know if it's a good idea, but it works. And if you want to contribute to that, uh, we could use some help. Another question? Paul. So the the question is, are you guys out to standardize browsers? <laughs> I, I, I'd love it if anyone at the W3C ever released a test suite as the definition of anything. Um, instead of writing a paper document, which can be interpreted variously by a variety of organizations. If there were any test suites in web standards at all, I'd really appreciate that. <laughs> My take on this. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you first, We're going to pile on in this question. Okay. <laughs> okay, so there's probably two things. We have to be clear, more clear in the future of where the boundaries are and what Selenium supports. So we could, we could again, uh, just look at uh, major, the, the, the browsers that are, in use percentage wise and we should target those top ones if a new and upcoming br uh, browser um, get, eats away at the percentages of those other browsers we'll, we'll take note uh, the other thing though which I if anyone watches it that's going to go home tomorrow and write their own web browser I implore them to make it as hackable and as plug-in writable as Firefox is more so more so, like do it better than Firefox to do third-party plugins because if you don't well well, one, I'll just instantly say that browser sucks. But, but two, <laughs> it'll make it our, our, our job hard to the point of impossible if you can't write a third-party hook into your event system so when pop-ups come up, we can catch it and do something else with it. Um, yeah, think, think of that. that or, or the other thing is, uh, you know, write it with testability in mind. A lot of people don't. And uh, so I would, I'm kind of cautious with the future browsers. There will be future browsers. I don't know what we'll be using in year 3000, but uh, make it should be hackable. Um, and that's it. Um, so the thing that I might do, and, and, and everyone's welcome to disagree with me, is, is turn that question on its head um, and say, which browsers have first class support in Selenium? Um, I think it's pretty obvious that even at the precise moment, there's sort of different grades of support. So um, like the Firefox and Chrome mode is awesome. Um, and, and, and it's super easy to write that in WebDriver um, using like that, that native thing. And, and I know that the Selenium IDE rocks and, and does something very similar. Um, whereas, let's say, uh, iPhone, on your, uh, iPhone on your Safari, Safari on your iPhone is a completely different kettle of fish. Like you haven't got those, as Jason says, you haven't got those hooks. So what might be more useful is to say, you know what, with this browser on this platform, you can expect these capabilities. In this browser on this platform, you can expect either subset or superset. Now, um, you know, this is something that which the Selenium team and, and we haven't nailed down properly yet, and, and it isn't very clear, and it sounds like it's something that would be useful, but who knows how that's going to be done. Um, Patrick, did you want to, or Jason or anyone, did you want to throw something in on top of that? 
Cool. Okay, I'm getting a thumbs up, so I'm not saying things that are wildly wrong. I'm, I'm very conscious that I'm like one of the newest guys here. So. Uh, I have a question for the audience. Mm -hmm. You're standing at the wrong end. I know. Well done. <laughs> was, was this useful tonight? Yeah? My sh round of applause if this is useful. <laughs> Okay, uh, I don't know how to phrase this. Uh, if this was uh, too technical, clap really, really loud. Was this not technical enough? Or was it, uh, I don't know how to actually ask this by asking for uh, feedback by claps, but um, a clap on or was this, was, this a good, um, was this a good format? Was this a good thing? Yes, raise your hands, clap. Okay, okay. Sorry, I'm asking this terribly, but uh, I'm curious like what people's uh, opinions of this are. Um, should we? Oh, and most importantly, should we do this again? Okay. More time for QA. Okay. We always need more time for QA in the development cycle. Well, let's find out. Don't you anybody else have questions? I have a question. My 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 single biggest problem with Selenium has nothing to do with the technical stuff. It's with the website and documentation. And I'm wondering, like, I go there and I'm. We chained Paul to a laptop all day, and we made him write documentation. Um, but the other main reason why our website looks like someone's head exploded is that we've got a lot of modes. We've got a lot of ways you can run your Selenium test, and we've got a lot of modes because some of them have advantages. Some stuff works in some modes, and some other stuff doesn't work in some modes. And how do you explain that? Well, if it's a Tuesday and you're testing Gmail, you probably want to use Chrome mode. Unless you need it on IE, you might get away with proxy injection. Oh, but multi-window may work for you if you're a single domain website, but single window works best in core, except on Firefox. <laughs> uh, it's difficult to explain that because the, we're standing on quicksand when we're automating these browsers. They are meant for you to click and read things. They weren't meant to be automation platforms, and we're doing our best to turn them into automation platforms, kicking and screaming. Um, but when we find a bug in the browser, we dodge it, and often we require you to engage with us to figure out how we're going to work around those bugs in the way that's going to make your project succeed that turns the testing away from, oh yeah, it's real simple, you just record it and you play it back, into, well, you record it and you play it back, and then you figure out why it's not working. And a big part of what we want to work on in the coming year is to help you figure out why it's not working. You know, make more links back to the documentation when we hit an error message that we think we understand that you probably don't yet. Uh, we can tell you more about what's going wrong with the product. Um, but until the browsers get awesome, and I think they're going to be growing more awesome as time goes on. Uh, the documentation is going to be hard. Uh, and we're going to try to make it clearer, but it's, it, there's just a lot of data. You're going to. Have we considered making it community documentation? Of course, we've got a wiki, and that means we're already community document. No. What I mean to say is that we're an open source project, and so anyone in the community. Okay, look, uh, um, what I mean to say is that uh, we need more help. Uh, you know, supporting community documentation takes time. You know, we've got forums where we reward users for answering questions. There's a lot of questions, way more questions than we can answer. Um, there's a lot of wiki pages, as wikis are. They grow wrong over time. Uh, there's a lot more we can do in the way of community documentation, and that requires a lot of community commitment to make it happen. Uh, I look forward to there being more community documentation as time goes on. As we get better wiki stuff, uh, as we evolve our website, we're going to be installing newer, cooler infrastructure in just another month or so. I'm sure Patrick wants to tell us all about it. Uh, and uh, I hope, hope we do more. Um, it takes a lot of you know, blood, sweat, and tears in the community to make good community documentation. Uh, just a couple quick notes. You may have noticed I'm not actually doing any of these projects. I'm just here kind of 
helping out with the uh, the website and the infrastructure and the organization. But um, as Dan said, we are we are moving in that direction. One thing you may have noticed is that the actual URL of the projects changed recently. Um, now there are all these subdomains on OpenQA, and we're opening that up to give the projects more ownership. So instead of this crappy OpenQA template that I am totally guilty of creating, um, we've got projects like Selenium Grid. If you go there, it actually is a little more straightforward on how to get started. It's got this nice. Uh, yeah, red, yellow, green uh, progression of how to get involved and download and get started. So that's a good start. Uh, but yeah, of course, documentation and community effort helps. Um, two things that I might ask for, uh, whether it's you guys directly or someone that you know. Uh, one, a designer would be nice. None of us are great designers. So if there's anybody out there that wants to volunteer some time or even might do it at a reduced hourly rate, we do have nice income, uh, small income from uh, AdSense. Uh, thank you, Google. And uh, we could pay for a couple hours of uh, professional design. We need it, as you know. Um, and then the other one is uh, if anyone has uh, experience as a um, technical uh, writer or technical documentation, knows how to you know actually do good information architecture, or can just go and copy Ruby on Rails org or com or whatever it is, you know wants to help us organize there. That would also be of course useful. And then finally. For those that are gearheads and don't really want to do any of that stuff, uh, as Dan alluded to, we're trying to, in the coming months, make it a little easier for you to help us identify what tests aren't working for you. Um, and in, in, in short, what we're trying to build is a small grid environment that is user interactive. Um, and none of this is, is all in our head. We have not uh, committed to any of this, but someone wants to help build it where you would actually be able to upload a test. Um, and get it into our environment and it would run on different machines. Today, OpenQA is running on just one Linux server and a uh, spare Mac laptop at my apartment. Um, and, uh, but we do have four machines there, Vista, Leopard, and uh, XP running different tests out there. Uh, we're gonna be opening that up more and integrating some of Philippe's uh, great work with Selenium Grid and ultimately making it a really cool platform for submitting bugs and getting feedback in a, in a really unique way. And it might be a fun project for you guys to work on. It'd be kind of a one of a kind thing for Selenium, but I think it would help everyone. Oh, uh, the other thing is, uh, for documentation-wise, uh, again, I'll, I'll say this is another opportunity for massive commercial uh, participation and, uh, you know, like selfish, uh, self, whatever, promotion. I'm under contract uh, with O'Reilly uh, to write uh, more Selenium stuff. And, and there are, um, but I've been delinquent on uh, getting that done. Uh, there's no Selenium Bible out there yet. There's no camel book or whatever. Uh, so if someone wants to uh, start that arms race, write the Selenium Bible. Uh, the what? The Hydra book. Hydra book, yeah. Uh, so, so uh, you know, if you know somebody at uh, book publishing companies, um, you know, get them to write a Selenium book. Um, the other thing is there are Selenium uh, mentions in some books, but it's it actually... There's no mention of Selenium RC anywhere, and when Selenium does get mentioned, it usually talks about the, the test runner mode. So there's even more opportunity to talk more about uh, Selenium remote control. Um, so uh, yeah, an arms race in documentation, commercial and open source community-wise, would be good. I think that's it for time. Um, let's thank everyone in the panel. And thank all of you for coming out tonight.